Thanks for tuning into the Dope Vision Experience podcast. This your boy Frank Nitty. Today I got a special wrap up. I got a wrap up guest with my with my homie What's Wallace. Happening? You know what I'm saying? Happening? From the town, from the bay, he gonna come help me get this squared away for you guys. I got some great topics for you guys to kind of look into. We're gonna do top five artists. We're gonna do you know the best moments of the year, some of the hottest artists of the year, the top five albums of the year. You know, so on and so forth. But the first thing I want to do, I want to kick off. We want to start off with the top five albums. Top you know, five. my top five album list, and then we're gonna get his top five album list, and we're gonna right. see it compare and see which one is gonna work best for you guys. You know, these I album top fives. You know, what I'm saying I know you guys are gonna be you know crushing us and trying to talk, say hey, you guys don't know what you're talking about, but these are some of our top five these, albums for the year. These legit albums, man. I don't want to hear none of that. I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear none of y'all feedback if y'all ain't agreeing with me. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and kick it off. I'm gonna give you my top five album. My first album of the year is no, no order, you know what I'm saying? But this is one I've been listening to, you know, Baby, My Turn. That's one of them, one of them gents that I've been li- really been listening to. Some of that good playback, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Replay value, real high on it. Um, I've really been listening to some of them digging. I think he's been really been doing his thing this year. He kind of, you know, taking it to another level. Yeah. And that's one of those albums I think is really going to be sitting with us for a while. What you think about that one? Man, I like it. I like, I like, uh, I like you said, The Baby? Yeah, yeah. Little Baby. Little Baby. I like Little Baby. Uh, man, he came uh, at first when he first dropped. I was like, no, oh, you know, he got, he got, uh, you know, a little bit of future, you know, yeah. to me when I heard him. But That's the ATL. Yeah, yeah. I thought like you know he he, he might have you know that drop that first album he might drop and kind of but nah he did he had, he, had, he got some stand power man so I like I like uh, I like little baby man plus he would uh he would uh keep seeing them you know oh yeah oh yeah they they the, they the cash money gent they the cash money crew right now powerhouse right now so sure. I like Lil Baby. My next one I'm going to drop out to is going to be back in Atlanta one more time. I got to represent for the South. You know, I'm from the Silk. The 21 Savage. 21 Savage uh, and Metro Boomin. Savage Mode 2. You know what I'm saying? This album dropped. You know, I'm a 21 Savage fan. He dropped this album. You know, we have been waiting, uh, anticipating this album drop. You know, the first one came through. It was a dope album. I thought this was a really dope album. You know what I'm saying? They had some good visuals come across this, with this album. So, you know, that's one of my one of my top five albums for the year. Yeah, and they took that man into custody, huh? They yeah, yeah, the yeah. They, they, they had to get him back there. You know what I'm saying? They weren't playing. They weren't hey. playing. Right around, the Super Bowl, right around the Super Bowl. Yeah, they weren't playing. Bowl, yeah, they weren't hey, playing. If I say this, though, he came back with a vengeance because that, that, that album yeah. hard. Yeah, album hard. hard. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Give, I always like Metro Boomin too. Metro Boomin is one of, uh, to me, is one of the top top producers in the yeah. game right now. You know, but yeah, that twenty one, uh, that twenty one Savage album was hard. Yeah, for sure, for sure. For sure. And Metro, Metro continued cranking, cranking the beats out there. Yeah, they they're a good duo. You know, what I'm saying when they get together, they do they they create some magic, man. I don't know what it is with them too, but when they get together, they create some dope music. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like it's like. Man, it's like uh, it's like Devontae Adams with uh, Aaron Rodgers. Right? Oh yeah, it's just a connection. It's the connection. They gonna put connect- the numbers up. Yeah, you know it's a connection. Mean? They got it. Got it. Got a good. And sometimes you know, so that's why I like when a lot of these young artists they they in the booth and they work together with the with the uh, producer in the room. Not necessarily a producer produce it somewhere else and then they send it to them. Then they rap over. But when you're in the room together, you can create you can create that magic, man. I think they just got that got that touch. And whenever they touch something, it's just might. It's like that Midas touch. Midas touch, man. And I always I'm always a fan of of, of artists and what producers that work with. That work for them, yeah. you know what I mean? Because nowadays, all you hear people talking about, oh man, all their music sound, all, all this artist music sound the same. This producer, but man, uh, Cash Money, all they, they was all produced by Manny Fresh. So yeah. all of them, be, I ain't gonna say they sound the same, but. It had a sound. It had a sound, and that, that's how you create a sound. That's how you create a sound. sound. You know what I'm saying? A lot of time, you get a lot of these different producers from all over the country, and they just sending you beats, and you just you know shuffling through 20, 30 beats and picking out the one that you like. And then sometimes the album don't sound cohesive versus when you like back in the day when you have you know what I'm saying you had that No Limit, like you said, Cash Money. You had you know what I'm saying Death Row. You had these artists and these producers all in the same room, just like when you had uh, Master P. He used to talk about how when they was out here in the Bay, man, he had he brought the producers from New Orleans, and they just went in, in a in a, in a uh, room. They just go from room to room, and the producers just producing beats, and they just rapping. You know what I'm saying? It all sound good. It all sound good, like you said. The this man is like when they drop, you know, you ain't even, you know who who it is. You're like, oh, okay, that's it. Man, that's that's death row right there. Yep. You hear them, them pianos or whatever. You know, that's got storage over a Dre beat. You know, like man, the '90s, how they how they did it. I mean, they had those they in-house producers. So, man, uh, 21 with Metro Boomin. Right. Yeah, they got that magic. That's that's, hey, that's my, it right there. My next one I want to drop. You know what I'm saying? I want to talk about is uh two chains so help me god two chains came back with this one man you know two chains been dropping some dope music you know what I'm saying i used to love him with titty boy and then he switched up and he went to two chains and you know what I'm saying he dropped the last one and, and he's so creative with his album drops you know he, he dropped the last one with you know with the pink house and the car they turned into the trap museum with with, 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 with ti and he just got some great visuals and then his bars and stuff just keep elevating he keep moving up with them bars and you know what I'm saying he, he he's one of those guys who i think he can put the album together and you can kind of when you hear album 
you hear the cohesiveness in his album. You know, you see the level up talk that he talk about and some of that, you know, he always, you know, he gonna come with the drip. He gonna have all that good stuff that you're gonna see in his videos. You know what I'm saying? He gonna, he kill features whenever he jump on. So, you know, that, that album was one of the ones that just recently came out, but I think that's one of the ones that's gonna last. I'm gonna send a test of time for us. Yeah, I mean, you know, this last album, man, I'm keeping real. I didn't really, that two chains, it was cool, but I, I, I didn't really, I wasn't feeling like, like, uh, what is it, the last one, the Pink Hot Trap, what is it, uh, uh, uh Pretty Girls? Black, Black Trap, yeah. I mean, but two, I always like two chains, you know, two chains been in the game for a minute, so, you know, he know, he know, you know who he is. He know where he, where, he, where his pocket. Is, yeah. You know what I mean, the two chains always come with the with the clever bars, with the funny bars, and and you know he always got he, he two chains is like his own. He got his own like persona, like it's, it's yeah, it's two chain, yeah, you know, two chain, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Chain, yeah. And I'm, I'm just I'm just excited that he ain't really got Jay on none of them, none of none of his albums. And stuff. You know, Jay been kind of dodging him, not let him get that verse. Like, well, come on, Jay, let him get that verse. He gonna kill it for you. Yeah, hey, you know, Jay be kind of stingy with them verses, man. He be stingy, but he give them to Ross, he give them to Jesus, but he be stingy with them verses. He be, he be, he be stingy with it. He be stingy. Hey, hey, well, hey. I think Bleak said that. Yeah. Bleak said that on some podcast. I've seen him that he asked Jay for. For for a verse, <laughs> <laughs> man, you can't even get one. Like, nah, you can't even, and Jay, and he at that level, he at that God level where you know what I'm saying he can pick and choose what kind of records he want to jump on and kind of you know take it to the next level. But that's just Jay. Mm-hmm. My next one, you know, I want to hold it down for New York. This is one of my favorite artists, and I think he bounced back with this album. You know, a lot of the times we kind of listen to his music and some of that, some of the um, the beats just don't match up to what he rapping about because he can rap so good that he can rap make any beat sound better. But he had just has been doing great with beat picking. And I choose this uh, this album, this Nas album, King Disease, produced by Hit Boy. You know, he, he locked in with Hit Boy on this album, and Hit Boy produced him one man. I think I think Hit Boy has been doing a great job in the industry, man. He's been doing a lot of producing for a lot of different artists, and he basically, you know, what I'm saying, got in the booth with, with, with uh, Nas. And you think and you think that somebody of his uh, his age range, he won't necessarily get the opportunity to work with a guy like Nas like that. West man, you know, you got to give him that. Uh, you know. <laughs> He, he he knows what's happening from the West, but yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying because it just it's kind of it's kind of hard to see some of the young the, the old the new generation working with the older generation, and you don't necessarily see that a lot, you know. And for him to lock in and produce the whole album, I think that was just like a win win for him, man. Because you know, Hit Boy just gave gave some solid some solid beats because a lot of the times like Nas just don't be picking on great beats, yeah. and because he can rap so good, he can just rap on any beat, and he's talked about that, you know, he can just rap on any beat, and so a lot of times, you know, we don't necessarily get the best beats from like me. I like a lot of more of those South beats. You know, I can get into, I get in tune with some of them, them New York beats. They kind of cool, mm-hmm. but when he kind of jump on some of them beats that he can just ride through, ride with, it's over. It's lights out with that when it comes to him. And then I got a little bonus one for you that I just started listening to. You know, I said the Jack Harlow. I ain't really had no, no, no. I had no notion or I had no anticipation. I had any, I had any, any thought process on how this album was gonna sound. I just threw it on. You know, I was doing some work and I just threw it on in the background. And the album kind of was all right. You know what I'm saying? And I think you know, what I'm saying people like that. That's not really. It kind of give you a break from listening to all the trap beats and then all the 808s and all the heavy and all the ops and all that type of stuff and he's just kind of just rapping you know coming from a different perspective so i think that's going to be one of those bonus albums that i listen to a little bit longer i don't i haven't listened to that jack harlow i've been hearing a lot about it but i know he uh i know he worked with that uh with that man uh ky uh i don't know how you say his last name phineas mm-hmm. he's an engineer out of kentucky he's uh two chains engineer. yeah man hey you know I'm a, I'm a producer guy i'm a production guy engineer guy man and i know he been uh he been in the game for a while, way back. Then. Yeah. So I know if he working with Jack, I know you know the uh the sound's gonna be nice. Yeah, and like I said, he got some he got some good cool beats on there. He riding them and he ain't really talking about all the ops and guns and all the, the normal stuff we hear in the trap music. And he just rapping, man, and he, he making it sound good. So this is one of those bonus albums that I you know I like that I've been listening to over the last couple of days and you know somebody else put me on to it and I was like, let me hear what he's talking about and he got some nice bars in there. So you know that's one of those albums. I'm gonna check him out. Let me hear. Let me see what you got for your man, top five. Talk man. to me. So, hey, so I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start at number five. I'm gonna start at number. Go five. ahead. My number five is Spring Clean. My man, Currency. Oh yeah, Currency. Oh yeah. Spitter, man. He, you know, hey, he been in the game for a minute. Hey, he's a. Uh, I don't. You know, he's. Some people say he's underground. Some people say. I mean, he's not really mainstream like that. But that Spring Clean. That Spring Clean is nice, man. The production is nice. Nice clean. Nice clean production. He has some nice samples in there. Uh. He had really had no features, you know. I think he got he got currency and a couple of them, but not not too many uh not too many features. But 
that's one of the things I like about him. He don't do a lot of, he don't do a ton of features. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He bought them whips. He be having them whips. You know what I'm saying? He crazy about them whips, bro. He crazy about the whoops. And I like, I like, I like currency music, man. Spitter, you know, Spitter and Dreddy. Yeah, yeah, man. That man, uh, he becomes something that you can roll up to, sip or something, and just, and just ride. For sure. Yeah, that was nice. Right. That's my number five, Spring Clean. My number four, Burn the Proof, Benny the Butcher. I feel you. Burn the Proof, Benny the Butcher, man. When he first came out, they first came out, it was uh, the Griselda guys. I yeah. I was like, okay, these, these cats are nice, but this is his first album, I believe, right? His first, his first album. I think it is his first album, but man, that was nice. He has, especially the one with the Hit Boy. He got, he got a couple tracks with Hit Boy. Man, Hit Boy, you know, he been, he been, he been he, he get around, you know what I'm saying? He got them beats, and his beats be nice, you know what I'm saying? He got yeah. some nice beats, you know what I mean? So I really, you know, dig anything that Hit Boy kind of produced, you know what I mean? And that Benny Butcher, sometimes with that Griselda, that Griselda, it's a, a little bit too New York for me sometimes, a little, a little bit too New York, you know what I'm saying? I rocks with it, but sometimes it's be a little bit too New York for me. Yeah, man, I mean, I mess I mess with Benny Butcher. I mean, the other the other cats, uh, uh, I forgot their name, um, Conway and... I forgot the other guy name. They cool, they cool, but that that yeah, Benny Butcher, yeah, he the one. That that was nice. Number three, you know, I gotta bring it to the bay. You know, my boy Larry Joe. You know, <laughs> hey, 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 you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, that that uh, Bayon. Man, that keep going. And man, produced by Harry Ford. I don't know. I mean, Harry Ford. He got a like a lot of nice um a lot of nice beats. Man, he got a nice old school sound. You know, he used a lot of samples like old school like Temptation sound, but. Man, he put them them 808s behind it. Man, real clean, man. If y'all y'all ain't heard it, man, keep going. Check that out. That one hard right there. My number two. This one was hard though. This one is hard because I really wanted to put a number one. This number two, Freddie Gibbs. I'm afraid of. Okay, I, I Gibbs. Yeah, yeah. I know you've been rocking with Gibbs for a minute. Gibbs, man. Yeah, good. Gibbs, man. That that Alfredo. Man, I I believe he got um he got he just got nominated for a Grammy, uh, best rap album of the year. Man, uh, I don't know who else is in that category with him, but that album, I hate to win. That I mean, he uh, he teamed up with Al the Alchemist. Alchemist, yeah, yeah. You know, Alchemist is another one. Been in the game, for yeah, for a while. minute. Nice beats, man. Nice production, man. Uh, been around a lot of artists, man. They 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 mess with them, but this one right here. Freddie Gibbs and, and Alchemist, man, that that that's another duo. That's, man. that's nice. Man. And Freddie don't really get that. He don't he don't get the the the, the accolades that he he probably should be getting because he went through the whole situation with G's in and he got locked up. He had the charge and all that craziness. And he kind of you know saying so he got past that, but he just doesn't get that recognition that he kind of like kind of like we're in the same boat with currency. You know, saying they kind of if he undergrounds, he's not underground because you don't really hear his music on on the, on the mainstream. But you know, saying if you know, you know. Yeah, man, he been around like you said. Man, he been around. He got a lot of. You know, you go back and listen to his old albums. He's like, man, this, he he been spinning for a while. He yeah. Bars, but uh, yeah, that that Alfredo is my, my number two. My number one, I gotta bring I gotta bring him back one more time. The Outrunners. The okay. Outrunners album that 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 spitter. The, okay. Man. Yeah, currency. That was it right there. That man, he was with Harry Fraud on that one too. Harry Fraud produced that album. Man, that was that was that was that was the soundtrack of the summer for me. The Outrunners, man. Uh, man, I. Man, one through however many, just let it ride. Just let it ride. All turn on, and that's that's the kind of albums I like when you just hit the button and just let it ride, no skips and nothing like that. Yeah. And you can just tell when somebody really producing albums and they locking in with each other because you can hear that flow all the way through. And we we kind of lose touch on the importance of a sequence in an album. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes when you have a lot of different beats and it just the the, the sound of the album is kind of all over the place and you're trying to put it in an order, it just don't come off right. But when you lock in with a guy and you produce from top to bottom and you put that sequence in there and you got them tracks laid one behind the other and sometimes you have a little skid in there here and there it just just let it ride yeah let it ride man he had he had ross come in helping my own one hey that that outrunners man to me that was that was the number one album of the year uh but like i said man i mean i would be mad if alfredo being number one yeah. you know what i mean because that hey that, that get gangsta gears man he he put out a classic to me that was he put out a classic with that one but yeah, those are my top five right there, man. I was like, yeah. Appreciate it, man. Like I said, man, this this our top five. I know you guys got your top five. We listen to different things. You, we always want people to help us put on new music. I hope some of the things that you heard in this in this clip here that you heard about some of this music that you may not have listened to that you go out and listen to and get some good replay value. You know, that's our top five albums of the year. We're going to wrap this one up. We'll be right back with our next segment. This is your boy Frank Nitton with my boy Wallace. Hey, we up in here, man. Holla at us, man. We're going to be back with our next segment. Stay, stay locked in with us. It's your boy Frank Nitton. I'm out.
All right, we back. We back again. This your boy Frank Nitty with the Dope Vision Experience Podcast. I got my boy Wallace here. We doing this wrap up, this twenty 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 wrap up. You know, we coming live from you guys. We are gonna we hit you with the top five um, albums of the year, but this time we're gonna come back with you. Gonna have the hottest uh, hottest artists of the, of the year. You know, saying these are gonna be these guys or these you know these girls who basically been kind of blazing it, even though we've been going through the pandemic. So we're gonna kick it off with Wallace. What you got for me, man? How does how does artists? I got two hottest artists of the year. I'm gonna go like again. I'm gonna go back to my man Currency. Currency, man, he I feel like Currency been putting out an album at least every other month. Every other month, he hit you, hit us with a mixtape, hit us with an album. I mean, he be, he been putting them out. There's been no um, no uh, nobody been won. Like man, what Currency been at? He always been he always been just just Consistent. like clockwork, consistently dropping. Not just dropping albums, just dropping dropping good albums, dropping albums that you can if it's if it's an eight track album you, you, you listen to six of them yeah six of them is, is, is in rotation so i got currency as my uh my hottest artist of the year but like i said freddie gibbs freddie gibbs is 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 is, is right there how, how does all that alfredo man uh he 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 been killing it that alfredo been killing it every every feature he's been on he dropped one with uh with big sean um i forgot the name but that, but that one was hard um so those are my those are my artists of the year. Yeah, currency man. And, Gibbs. and definitely with currency, you know, Spit Andretti, he been dropping some some dope music, man. Like I said, every other month he been dropping some projects. You know, kind of keep it consistent. That's the thing about your artists; you want them to be consistent. Some artists has the ability to like you know drop an album here, you know, come yeah. back like Kendrick. He can drop an album one year, maybe sit out for like two or three years, and kind of come back with another album. But you got a fan base, but you know somebody where like Andretti, you know, saying he's more of an underground rapper, so he got to feed the streets. You got to yeah. keep that. He kind of like how your guy used to be. He kind of constantly dropping mixtape out. The mixtape about the mixtape and they keep you know saying relevant especially when you're not getting that, that, that mainstream you know no, notice when people are putting you on the radios you don't have your videos play you know what i'm saying yeah. but if you got an imprint and you constantly put on music and your and your fans are really you know die hard listening to you mm -hmm. whenever you drop something they're going to be on it so you so you never feel like you you know what I'm saying you move off or you go away and things like that so with that and then also with the freddie gibbs situation I, you know say i like yeah. freddie i just ain't haven't listened to him a lot you know so i listen to him here and there when he kind of drop on some yeah. but like i said if you know you know when it comes down to freddie yeah, yeah, that man Freddie Gibbs, man. Like, like I said, a lot of people. I mean, he might just be coming to a lot of people's, uh, a lot of people's uh, site, but man, he he's been steady putting out good projects. If you go back and listen to him, man, one of my favorite ones he did back in, uh, I want to say around 2014, maybe 15, he did a uh, track with a producer out here, uh, DJ Fresh. He did a uh, mixtape with DJ Fresh, man. The whole mixtape going, going, man. It's all about the bars, especially when the guy got the lyrics. Yeah. So you got your two. You wrapped up with with Freddie Gibbs. And, cur and currency, Spitter Andretti, you know what I'm saying, that, that New Orleans boy, right. you know what I'm saying, he got them drops, got them <laughs> yeah. dunks for you, you know what I'm yeah. saying, got them cars for sure. Man. So I'm going to drop you guys my hardest artist, artist of the year. You know, I'm going to kick it off with this first one. You know what I mean? Straight from the South again, you know, I got my South, I got to represent for the South. I got my guy, you know what I'm saying, he's been putting in that work. <laughs> Money bag, yo, you know what I'm saying? Money bag, hey, money bag, but you know what I'm saying, been going hard, you know. Yeah. And it's not nowadays. It's not also, you know, not necessarily about all your music. Yes, your music has to be good, but you also had to have, you know, what I'm saying a face in the social media world. And I think he does a great job when it comes down to social media. You know, what I'm saying he has a good presence on social media. You know, what I'm saying to kind of constantly yeah. push his music. You know, he's signing your Gotti, you know what I mean? And I kind of felt like, I didn't know if your Gotti was at that stage where he was ready to kind of coach somebody and sign somebody on, but he took yeah. he took him under his wing, and that boy, take he's on, he took off, man, you yeah. know what I mean? He, he dropped some, you know what I'm saying, yeah, two heartless, you know what yeah. I'm saying? You no know, mixtapes no mix were just classic. He, got, yeah. he made some classic mixtapes yeah. to me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what kind of got me, you know, really locked in when it came to, you know, Moneybag. And then after that, he just kind of like just took off, bro. He been, yeah. he been dropping yeah. some music, you know, Definitely. been collabing with a lot of different people. Yeah. I like to yeah. hear him when him and Baby get together. I like when him and Lil Baby get together, they make some good music. Him and uh, him and some, anybody else from the North, you know what I mean? They, they get together and make some music, especially with him and... Him and uh, your guy, they get on the track together. They can oh, yeah. ride real good together. And he can kind of blend with the north, south, and the west. You know what I'm saying? He can move around in different pockets oh, yeah. and get it in yeah. with people. Even he messed with some of the guys from Dallas and stuff like that. So he can yeah. get some work. He can get that work in. He can put some bars on, lace down some bars yeah. and get it hot for you. Yeah, money back, man. Money back, he, he, he's cold too. Money back cold. Like you said, those mixtapes, man. He didn't just lean on like, okay, I'm signing to Yo Gotti that, you know, I'm I'm going to wait. Nah, he went out there. Like you said, the mixtapes he dropped. The mixtapes you dropped was, was was tough. Yeah, it was tough, man. Yeah. And then he he followed that up with his album. You know what I mean? And, and he got a he got a couple of mainstream guys on there with uh, uh, J Cole. Yep. You know, got him on the on the album, and you know, kind of 
But yeah, man, money bag, money bag is one of those guys. He's yeah, one of those guys. And I think guys. you know, what I'm saying he, it just gonna, it's just up for him on the next, on the next couple of years, man. Yeah. He's just gonna be in the up and up, man. You know, him and Black Youngster they kind of signed a CMG. Yeah. And the boys kind of get together, they drop the project, and I was kind of you know highly surprised that it, it sounded good. You know what I mean? Even though kind of Black Youngster kind of be you know. He be on, you know, he be on what he on, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. He a wild boy, you know yeah. what I'm saying? He a wild boy, the crew, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That boy got the gun locked in and put a project out. The next one, I'm going to come back with another one, you know what I'm saying? Lil Baby. I just think Lil Baby, just really, he been having a year, man. I think yeah. he's just been having a, a magical year. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He said he went up on his features, and then he also talking about how he been went up on his, you know what I'm saying, his concerts and stuff like that when he been charging. And I just feel like he just been like on everybody's work, and he been putting in that work, man. I think that's what it is for artists. When you first come out, man, mm -hmm. you kind of establish your sound, get your voice, and then you just kind of like blaze through the summer, just dropping track up. You just every time you turn something on mm -hmm. and you hear his voice, yeah. you just feel like that man. Yeah. He just he just blowing up, you know what yeah. I'm saying? He just taking off. Yeah. If, yeah, I just think when it came down to the Black Lives Matter protest, when it was Baby just had a nice single, you know what I'm saying? He was out in the forefront, you know, we was asking for what a lot of rappers at, and he kind of stepped up and put a record out there, and it kind of made a lot, it made a, a nice little noise, yeah. and it kind of put us put us um, in a perspective that, you know, rappers have something to say too, because we were wondering, like, you know, where they at? You know, we kind of, you know, anytime something going on in the streets, we kind of figure out the rappers, what they're going to talk about. Even though we don't look for we don't look to them to kind of handle on our political, you know, right. front, but right. we like to hear what they got to say and where they're coming from and stuff like that. So, you know what I'm saying? That was one of my, you know, because you know, rap is the biggest genre in music right yeah, now. Yeah, they hip. So. They, you know, what I'm saying we we run it. We, hip hop culture run mainstream culture, which pushes to the world culture. You know, what exactly. I'm saying so. You know, when we have our rappers step up and kind of say something, even though we don't look, you know, we don't look to them to kind of handle our political right. front, right. but we just like to hear what they got to say from time to time. Yeah, because you know they they're part of the they're part of the fight too. So everybody that they, everybody in their own lane do what they do is it just pushing towards a better. Uh, Pushing towards the greater good, so yeah, absolutely. yeah he, did, he did his thing. He did his thing with that one. And then one of my, I got a little bonus one. I always kind of throw this bonus one in here. You know, this bonus one, I think, you know, it's gonna be Meg the Stallion. You know, she did a great job this year. You know, last year she was a breakthrough artist for Apple. And I think this year she kind of stepped up a little bit more. She had a situation where, you know, her, her and Tori went through, but they kind of more or less, it kind of pushed her, you know, uh, to the forefront even more. Yeah. You know, she put out some good music. I'm not going to deny she put out good music. And then she made that nice little record where she had kind of ending the year of when she made with Cardi B with that WAP, kind of made a lot of noise for the for the ladies. Right. You know, you always got to represent for, you know, you got to have somebody to represent for the ladies. We can't yeah. leave them out. You know what I'm saying? They're a lot of the, they, they do a lot of the streaming of the music and paying for tickets and yeah, stuff like that, too. Yeah. So we can't leave them out when we're talking about hardest artists of the year. So we want, want to feel like we biased. It's always talking about men. So I want to throw some ladies in there as well, too. So right, right. With that, you know, we come, we wrapped up with our, you know, our hardest artists. Like I said, it's our, who we feel, how we feel they're the hardest artists, you know what I'm saying? You might have your hardest artists, you know what I'm saying? We'd like to hear your comments, you know. And if your hardest artists ain't not hardest artists, you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we kicking it, you know what I'm saying? It's 2020. That's how we doing it, you know. We out here in this beautiful Bay Area scene. We're doing something different. We want to get out the box a little bit, you know. We've been stuffed in the house for the last Rose, several months. Rose, next time we need, we need a couple We need a hundred bottles, bottles Rose, you know what I'm saying? Hit us with a hundred bottles, you know what I'm saying? Man. So that's how we kicking it, you know. We got to set up. We got we're doing some dope stuff for you. So you know, hanging up, hang, kicking with us with some more. We got some more topics coming up. We appreciate you guys sticking with us. Come back for our next segment. It's your boy Frank Nitty, my boy Wallace. We out to the next one. Man, we appreciate you guys sticking in with us. This is your boy Frank Nitty from the Dope Vision Experience Podcast. I got the 2020 wrap up coming for you guys. I got my boy Wallace from the Bay. Exactly, you know exactly. what I'm saying? He here with me. We kind of going through it. We listed our top five, you know, hardest artists, artists of, the, of the year with, with the top five albums. You know, now we're coming back to you. We're coming with a little bit something, a little bit different. We're dropping what's called the Pandemic Award. The Pandemic Hustle Award. We kind of, you know, highlight the people who actually been out here, who been grinding throughout the pandemic. And we kind of been seeing... You know what I'm saying? The opportunity for them to continue to grow and keep their foot on the on the industry net. You know what I'm saying? I kick it off and let you I go first this time. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna drop the first one. I gonna I'm gonna say I know this might not might not be the best one that everybody kind of feeling right now, but you know what I'm saying? I had to give it to him, you know, Tory Lanez with the quarantine radio. You know what I'm saying? When the when the, when the pandemic hit, okay. you know what I'm saying, everybody kinda of locked in the career. We didn't know what we was gonna do. And then all of a sudden, you know, Tory came through with that, you know, on the gram, he was pushing that quarantine radio and it was going crazy. You know what I'm saying? It was going crazy. I forgot you know? about that. I forgot about Quarantine that. Quarantine radio, man. And then the thing about it, why I kind of give him that, give him that, um, I give him that pandemic hustle award is he flipped that. You know what I'm saying? He took that, you know, from the gram. Mm -hmm. They locked him down. They, they shut him, Instagram shut him down. Yeah. He got it back up and going. And then mm -hmm. he flipped it into a YouTube, a live stream YouTube. And so he went on YouTube and he did the live stream and had people donating. Yeah. And so that was a way for him to kind of, you know what I'm saying, make money and create new avenues for himself to kind of stuff that he probably would have never thought about. 
you know what I'm saying, pre-pandemic, you know, and that's a great thing about the, you know, not to say the pandemic was a great thing, but people being creative in the, in the pandemic allowed him to create something different, another different avenue, a yeah. stream of money for himself and playing a big part, and YouTube playing a big part of it, allowing him to come in, do live stream, nobody was in the crowd, it was just being donations from the chat box and things like that, and he just had a good time, and that's how you take something small from the gram, just having fun, and you flip into a, 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 another stream of avenue for yourself, so. I think that's one of the ones that we're gonna look back on and be like, oh, that was the first of its kind. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, man. That was that was that was big, man. I didn't, I didn't think about that, man, because he was. Everybody was on there. Everybody wanted to see who was Tory Lanez who was gonna come on there next, doing the uh, next thing. Like, uh, I think your boy Big Fendi had something like had that. Fendi, him and Boost. <laughs> Yeah, quarantine, 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 quarantine. You killing with the quarantine yeah, radio. You killing with the quarantine radio. Yeah. Everybody want to be locked in. Yeah. Then I come back with my next one. I think this was the one that nobody really thought was going ever going to happen. We had the the Mike Tyson and the Roy Jones Jr. bout, yeah. and the whole thing was crazy. The way how he had it set up, you know, what I'm saying we never saw anything like that. Where they had to, you know, it was it wasn't conventional boxing like you know, cause boxing itself can kind of get a little stale to me personally. I'm not an mm -hmm. avid boxer fan. I like boxing. I'm a right. casual fan, like a lot of different people. But the way they did it, where you know they had Snoop Dogg being a commentator, yeah. out of Sonya who come from US, yeah, UFC yeah, to being yeah. a commentator, yeah. and then they had to. The Acts where you know what I'm saying different rappers performing in between the fights yeah. was something different that we've never seen before. Yeah. And Trilla kind of came with that and kind of like gave us a different uh, perspective on how uh, a boxing match can take place. Because normally you just see you know you see all the little the tune up fights, yeah. And then you get, you see the boxer they kind of cut back between between the boxers, and then yeah. they have the boxer come out with the music, and then that's kind of it. Yeah, you got people but, in the crowd, you know, yeah, attendance, yeah, you know, exactly. But this one was a whole different whole different um, avenue where you had Snoop Dogg. Where I think we need to start looking towards that in the future. Where take that, where have like normal people calling these fights, you know yeah, what I mean? Kind of make yeah. us more entertaining because Snoop Dogg took the, you know, he took the cake for me, bro, when he was like, you know, talking about, you know, different fights throughout the night yeah. and then talking about the fight with Jake Paul and then, just, you know, just talking about the Roy Jones. He's just giving yeah. us a different perspective when it comes. He kept it, he kept it funny, you know, he kept it light, you know, and he still, but he still hit you with some knowledge. He hit you with what was going on, hit you with some uh, some facts about, you know, Tyson or, or, or Roy Jones, like you said, yeah, out of I mean, you know, the days, uh, get me wrong, I used to, I used to I like watching Larry Merchant, but those days, like, look, man, I don't want to hear Larry Merchant no more. Like you said, give me somebody, give me somebody Some fresh, fresh, man. You know what I'm saying? Somebody mm -hmm. that, that basically just talk to us, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why I think that, that, that uh, what Snoop did, he talked to us. You know, it was just like we was in the barbershop, but we were just sitting in the room watching the fight. He just kind of yeah. talked instead of trying to get us that, that golden voice talk. You know what I mean? Like, that's okay at times, but we just know that they weren't throwing no haymakers when the guy was just, oh, Roy Jones and yeah. Tyson did yeah. this and Tyson. Yeah. Like, nah, yeah. man, that's cool. You just chill. Give us, give us what the play by play, you know just let them know what's going on, and Snoop kind of did that for us. Yeah, and, he, and, he, and it wasn't like, it didn't sound like he was under any strict guidelines, guidelines. like, oh, you can't say this, you not, nah, he was just being Snoop, yeah. man, I'm, I'm talking, I'm saying whatever come to my mind, they were like my uncle's up there in their fight, exactly, man. that's exactly. what everybody was thinking, man. Exactly, and I think that what gives him the opportunity to do that, because he was he's a part owner when it comes down, I think, with Trilla, I think he's a part owner there, okay. so that allowed him to kind of have a little free will to kind of talk, him. but that's always Snoop, Snoop's going to be Snoop regardless, no matter where he is, yeah. and that's a good thing about it, you know, and I saw, and I saw, I think they, that, that fight did like over 80 million or something, yeah, like yeah. that with the pay-per-view yeah. pay buys, yep. that's crazy for a a boxing match of its kind like that you know man, what I mean man it, it just it just it just shows you the way how social media has changed the game cause you got Mike Tyson his social media he's he showing it just getting everybody ready for the fight you got Roy Jones doing his thing on his own social media platforms just just hyping hyping the, hyping the whole man I mean I can't lie man they kinda you know took a page from Mayweather you know it took up. but yeah man that was, that was dope man I, I enjoyed it even though like you said you know what uh, you know you know Tyson was going in Tyson, yeah. you could. they weren't throwing no haymakers. They got what was a three minute round? What was it? Three, two, two minute man. round? Yep. It was seven rounds. Yeah. So they, you know, what I'm saying these guys up at age fifty, they up yeah. at fifty. Boy, so you scared? Yeah. You know, Roy Jones trying to he he's swinging from the outside yeah, like he yeah. normally do, but you know, what I'm saying yeah. Tyson still got that. You know, Tyson yeah. still got that that knockout like he got that knockout power. Knockout, knockout. And so you know, the fight itself, you know, the whole it's like an event. That whole night of the event was good for me. I even like the the fights leading up to the main event fight. You know, they had some good fights. You know, we are gonna get to that. We are gonna get to that later. I know you're laughing. We are gonna get to that later. So you oh, know. Man, did they have some good fights? Was it? <laughs> you know, we saw some good. Ones. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna last. Yeah. So you know, that that was some. You know, just that night in, in this in this totality, man. That night was just good, man. Yeah. And it was yeah. good for for entertainment. And I think that's what we have to do with boxing, man. You know, boxing has to become more of an entertainment thing as well. And I think they could take a page from the, you know having the artists come out and do a little bit of show and things like that. So yeah. And then you know, I had one more. 
you know, this one, you know, he probably, he, I don't think he really dropped a lot of music, but this guy, he has a crazy cult following, you know, even his, his following is so strong that a lot of these different brands want to work with him, mm -hmm. and he's becoming a more of a mega star, and that's going to allow him to be able to last the test of time going outside of music. Now, give this one to Travis Scott, you know, this, this guy has mm -hmm. some crazy partnerships, crazy partnerships, man. Yeah. He had the PS, he had the Sony PS5 partnership man. that people went crazy for. Fortnite. He had the Fortnite joint. Man, because my kids was going crazy, man. They was like, Dad, Travis Scott, we got to be up for the trial. I think it came on, it dropped. I want to say it dropped, like, when the pandemic first started. When the pandemic first started. And you know, everybody, all the kids, because it was during the summertime. Yep. Kids wasn't at school. You know, I think he dropped his, I want to say midnight. Mm -hmm. I want to say the first the first one he dropped. It might have been till 11. It didn't mean, but I know in my household and all their friends, that was waiting. They waiting. Was waiting for it. I ain't gonna lie. I was man when it dropped. I was sitting right there trying to see what he doing right behind his shoulder, looking like, "Ooh, that shit, that shit hard." You, you know, know what I'm saying? So he, he got yeah. some crazy partnership. He, had yeah. the, he got the Fortnite joint. He had the punk. Let me say the the Sony PlayStation Five joint. He did. You know, he had the videos leading up to that. And then he also had uh, the McDonald's joint where people were going crazy selling the shirts for six hundred dollars. It's straight from McDonald's. The Travis Scott burger. You know what I'm saying? So he had crazy partnership. And then he had the Nike joint that he already had. Oh, yeah. and he was kind of yeah. dropping the, the different the different Travis Scott joints with Nike. So I just think he got a crazy cult following. And then he just kind of like boomed through the pandemic. Yeah. But not necessarily with the money, with the music side, but more or less just with his partnership. But it's just how he used how he leveraged yeah. his music to be able to build with these different you know saying different brands and partner his his likeness and things like that. And that's what you got to do, man. You got to be able to get that money outside of just the music because yeah. the music probably not bringing as much money as it used to be because you used to pay. When we was coming up, you paying, what, $17, $17 for, for a CD? You're going to see a show. You're going to see the shows. You know what I mean? Didn't, 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 uh, you got the didn't, merch yeah, and man, all that. that you know what I'm saying? So now it's all streams. So you got to you know put up a million, couple, couple million streams to get your money back because yeah. you're getting you know, pennies on a dollar when it comes to the stream. Same so you got to be able to get your money some other way, which you yeah. can't do, go out and do shows. So I think this is a way for him to kind of level up his money yep. with these different partnerships. Yeah, yeah, that's good, man. Yeah, I like I like Travis. I mean, you know, Travis Scott is a good, uh, man, he's a good performer, man. Like you said, he leverages his, his, his stardom. You know what I mean? Because like I said, man, I had, he had the kids at the house, man. They was, they was on it. Like, nah, I got to get the Travis Scott skin or whatever. <laughs> and then the for the Fortnite. I'm like, what? what? You know? Yeah, but yeah man. Uh, Travis Scott did his thing. Man. Nice, yeah, nice. I agree, I agree. All right, so we let's wrap up my, my, um, Pandemic Hustler War, I know it's a little bit different. I know you guys probably haven't heard of this before. We kind of got these topics, so it's kind of thinking outside the box when it comes down to pandemic, who kind of made it through, who kind of leveled up and got their money up and got their brands up throughout this pandemic. So we're going to see what my boy Wallace, who we got, who we coming back with with this Pandemic Hustler Award. Coming back, coming back, number one. Coming back to my guy Spitter. Ah, Andre. My guy Spitter, man. He gave us, man, off the top, I want to say he gave us at least four. At least four during the pandemic. With Welcome to Jet Life, he, he dropped uh, uh, a collaboration with, with Fendi and a couple of other, uh, T.Y., a couple other cats. The Spitter kept dropping. I want to say he dropped about four albums during this pandemic, man. They all, they all was cold. They all was cold. So, man, he always, man, always dropping out. I, I want to say Spitter dropped at least four, man, four or five projects a year. So then him, just with the pandemic, dropping four and what? We've been in what, yeah, about eight months. Eight months. It was four. You know what I mean? I mean, so that's my that's my guy for uh, the pandemic award. But I, I have a, I have a second one. Talk second. to me. Talk to me, man. Uh, even though I really don't like dude like that because of stuff he 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 said outside. Of, but I gotta give it to Dana White, man. Dana. Dana White. Man. UFC. UFC. Oh man. yeah, he put it on with the, with the Fight Island. Man, Fight Island, man. I mean, Fight Island. Man, we need we needed that. He, Bro, he went and got Dubai. Man, had it all set up. Man, we needed that. Man, he had all he had all the boys out there yep. fight. Man, the, he had all the big fights going on even during the pandemic. Man, so everybody was talking about. Man, I, I'm sitting back watching this UFC. Yep. People didn't even like the UFC. It was the only thing on. All the thing on was no sports, no hoop, no football, nothing. I mean, baseball wasn't even playing. Yep. I mean, he came he came through. Had Adesanya out there fighting. All them cats out there fighting, man. And it was that was good fight. Yeah, that was dope. It was dope, bro. Like, cause we were, we was around here. We was, we on the chat screaming like, ain't, yeah. ain't nothing to watch. What we gonna do? You yeah. on the gram? You on social media? You gonna can do that so much? Yeah. And then you know, what I'm saying we kind of took for granted with all these different sports we had going on. Yeah. And then for him to go over there and just set up a whole island with just like you know precautions for everybody to take the COVID test. Yeah. And this is before we even you know we was in the, in the midst of it. Like, dude, we didn't know what was gonna happen. It was, was we was in the midst of it, and he kind of like put their heads together and put a whole island together. 
and had all those great fights come out of it. And that's a real hustler war right yeah. there for sure because yeah. we were, we were dead in the water when we were, and when it came down to yeah. sports because they they were still talking about what we we're gonna do for the NBA. You know, baseball was in the middle. I mean, we didn't, we didn't know what was gonna happen. So for him to kind of just come out the blue and be like, we're gonna put everybody on the island and just you know saying go put on these matches and have you guys tuned in and, and, and it was at a decent time where it didn't really fall off for us where we normally would be trying to watch something at like two in the morning or something like that so yeah. it was still at like our normal time watching the yeah. show watching the fights and stuff like man, that yeah yep still gave us one of the biggest fights of the year uh out of Sonya, yep, concerts, yep. You know, oh man you know my boy putting that work in stop in the drop you what second round Ooh, putting, putting that work in, in you man, know putting but, that work in man I, that was that was one of the biggest fights of the year during the pandemic so that's man uh Dana White, I mean, he did be running his mouth a lot. He yeah. talking a lot of reps. But he, putting right it, but, you, but he backing it up with them fights, though. Yeah. And that's the thing I like about USC, where we, I know you, you're a big boxing fan. Yeah. And yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm a casual boxer. I like boxing. You know, I like the big matches. I'm not going to watch the, you know, the featherweight of some nobodies. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm going to watch the main event fights yeah. and stuff like that. But when it came to USC, I just felt like USC was just a little bit more of an entertainment thing. And they, they had that kind of locked down. They probably not bringing as much money as boxing. Yeah. But that entertainment value was there. You know what I mean? We're going to get the best fights because you got it ran by one person where Whereas boxing is being ran by nobody. nobody. Everybody's just kind of, you, you, yeah. you got this federation over here, yeah. you got that federation over there, they doing what they want to do. Yeah. And when it came down to UFC, it came down to one person making a decision of what was going to happen, and that's where it kind of came back when he's like, hey, look, we're going to go over here in Dubai. Man. We're going to set up a whole island, we're going to bring everybody together, and you guys yeah. going to either fight or you're not going to fight. Yep. He, he Man, he brought it, like you say, he brought it, and the energy was still there, man, because my guy, uh, uh, Bruce Buffer. <laughs> hey, like like a like a hundred thousand room, man. Like a hundred, yeah, hey, like a hundred thousand room. Ain't nobody in there. You like let man, you jump up. Let's go. Let's Look, get it in. He's still coming. Man, Bruce Buffer come in. He do his thing. Let's get fighters, ready. Let, man, get the fighters going. The fighters go over there. Pump when he be introducing them, man. Nobody in the arena, but hey, they out there fighting like it's a hundred thousand, hundred thousand in there, bro. Yeah, yeah. So. You know, that's our pandemic hustler war. Like I said, it's something a little bit different. We come out the box with these ideas, yeah. some of these topics that you guys probably never heard of before. You know, that's what we do here at the Dope Vision. We're trying to create a whole experience for you guys. As you can see, this is a Dope Vision experience. We outside, we in the bay, we're doing great things. Love it's your boy Frank Nitty. We're going to come back to you with another segment. Lock in with us, tap in with us. We'll see you in the next segment. It's your boy Frank Nitty. We out. Yep. Thank you guys for sticking around to the Dope Vision Experience Podcast. This is your boy Frank Nitty. I'm back for another segment. I've got my boy Wallace with me. We're so here on. with the 2020 wrap-up. We, we gave you guys some of the top five albums, the hottest artists, so on and so forth. We've got a couple more topics with you guys. But this one we're going to kick off. We're going to talk about our top five versus battle that we saw that came in 2020. You know, we had the opportunity to kind of be kind of stuck in the house and we didn't know what we was going to do. We had, we had quarantine radio to kind of pop mm -hmm. off and then now we had... Um, these battles with some of these artists with this music that we've been hearing for you know a lifetime and then all of a sudden we get these battles that came from uh swiss beats and timbo yeah. and they kind of put this together and now we have a they whole thing off, yeah they? they started off they did you know what I'm saying? they started, they did the first time where they were just mm -hmm. kind of doing it on back and forth yeah. and then we had sky storage and so on and so forth with those guys but yeah some of my top five that we're going to kick it off with you know i go my first top five that gucci versus jesus <laughs> I mean, you know so i gotta I represent it. for the south but I that gucci it. versus jeezy you know what i'm saying that was everybody top man that man. was that was a most anticipated versus album of all time yeah them boys in the same in the same building we didn't know they're gonna be in the same building we just knew something was gonna pop off yeah you know yeah. What I'm saying we know the tension and you know what I'm saying me coming being raised in the south and born in the south you know what I'm saying in those times and, and just knowing about and running around atlanta when it was really it was really heavy out there in them streets man it was like you gucci or you jeezy man you know what i'm saying yeah. and that music it was tension like you go to some clubs they don't play no Gucci music, and some clubs they don't play no Jeezy music, and it was just that it was just that much tension in the city. Yeah. So I can imagine being born in the city and living in the city when that was really going down. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that Gucci versus Jeezy, you know, they had to. You could see the tension in the room when they was when it was going down. You know what I'm saying? We, and Gucci played yeah. and Gucci and Gucci played the disc records in the room together. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Kept going. After. It kept going. Kept other, going you know what I'm saying? And, and Jeezy kind of took it on the chin. You know what I'm yeah. saying? He took it on the chin for yeah. you know what I'm saying, try to be the bigger part of the culture and things like that. But that was one of the top five verses that I think that you know that came off so forth. And I, and I think but, it was good for the music. I think it was good for the culture, though. It, it was good. It was good for the culture. I mean, I think I think everybody went in. It wasn't no winner or no loser. They just wanted to see them, the two men in the room and playing that playing that classic hit. But for me, I was just man. It wasn't even it wasn't even close. 
Like Jeezy ran off with that. Oh yeah, yeah. Jeezy, Jeezy, Jeezy definitely. Um, he had. Yeah. I think. I think it because Gucci wasn't really there to try to win. I think he was there more or less to try to prove a point. Yeah. And I yeah. think that's where kind of, yeah. Gucci kind of went a couple of rounds. He went with some of his diss tracks, which was hard. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying for him to rap a diss track about somebody in the room with somebody. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I think that was more of his tactic. He was like, I'm here to prove a point. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, he had to, to attempt to, to attempt to murder on his life yeah. and all yeah. on his head and all that good stuff. Yeah, skin yeah you know what I mean? So like, I think that was know. more of his, like, hey, I bounce back. You know what I'm saying? I'm Gucci. You know what I'm saying? I'm bigger and better than ever. You know what I right. mean? And so I think that was an opportunity for him to kind of like just flex his muscle. And but yeah. Jesus came in up more or less, I'm trying to win the battle and show people I got the records. Try to win. Yeah, and, and keep it keep us cool. Because like, yeah. like you said, man, Gucci came out of the diss track talking about his clothes talking about man i put him in the dirt if you yeah. see some more so you know uh gucci was he was there for a whole different reason he yeah yeah, to win. yeah yeah he wasn't he wasn't yeah. there to win he was just like he just there to prove a point you know what yeah. i mean because you know he battled back from you know i remember those time you know what i'm saying when you know gucci's on the run you know yeah. i read his book i you know so i read his book so i you know i know, know a little bit more about it when he okay. kind of was going on during those times you know he was on the run you know what I mean? and then he turned himself in and plus he was. I remember those times when Gucci was going to jail and he was getting out of jail. He have a, a welcome home party. You be at the club. You know, what I'm saying everything going up. You crunk, yeah. it's, it's, it's crazy in them times. So you know, what I'm saying the city really felt Gucci and for that to kind of right. go down and then for him to bounce back and kind of because he he he, he, he ear of the south to me. You know, what I'm saying he yeah. he get he just about everybody that's really just kind of popped off in the south in that Atlanta market. You know, what I'm saying Gucci had his hands on it like Migos. Baby, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You know, young thug, yeah. you know, so on and so forth, man. He had a ton of artists that kind of like come up under his print, you know what I'm saying? Right. So for right. him to be able to kind of go from there to now, I think that's really big. Oh, yeah, definitely. The definitely. next one for me, I know it's kind of a little bit more laid back. I had to go with that Jill yeah. Scott, that Jill Scott and that Erica Badu, you know what I'm saying? That was one that kind of like get your vibes right, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, you can sit back yeah. and get you a glass of wine and you can chill, you can relax with. And so I think that was an opportunity for people to kind of just kind of sit back. Cheer, relax, kick it with your old lady, and kind of listen to them old songs, and kind of get a little bit of that history yeah. that we kind of like really like when it came for when it came for those uh, Jill Scott and Erica Badu. Just all about them vibes for that one. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. This next one, uh, it gotta be you know, it was probably like the meme of the year almost. Where you kind of come down to that Teddy Riley and that baby face. <laughs> hey Teddy, I don't know what Teddy was thinking, of, man. Teddy got a whole set up in his bag. We're in the middle of the pandemic. Teddy, you probably had no people in there with you, man. Teddy had about Teddy had about twenty five people back there. Teddy and not, not knowing what the hell. Doing. He when he looking around, he don't, he wonder what the sound that kind of about hitting no sound like Teddy. You doing too much? Just yeah. plug the ox cord in, man, and, and let's go. Man, let's Daniel go. Was out there like he was back out there with God. Yeah, <laughs> in the hall, and then that boy was ready to get the two stepping out there doing his, doing the shimmy. But hey, th hey, they wasn't back there. They wasn't on the same page. Man, he just kept turning around, looking and grabbing the mic like like he was James Bond or something. I'm like, hey, I'm, like, I'm, like <laughs> I'm like, I'm like Teddy. What's going on, bro? Just plug the ox cord, ox cord in. Put it on the Instagram live. Let's go. And, and Babyface is in his own little zone. He already got his guitar. He's like, I don't know what's yeah. going on. He all lost just like the rest of us. That's called doing too much. Doing too much, man. Teddy was out there like, like, man, like he was somebody's uncle, not knowing how to work. Uh, uh, Can't work technology. technology. Can't do it. I'm like, bro, what is, what is you what doing? What you doing? What you doing? So that was one of those. That's one. But even though, you know what I'm saying, we, he didn't get that, that full experience, but we still got opportunity to hear that, that dope music from Babyface, and, you know what I'm saying, and also from Teddy Riley. The next one, Probably a lot of lot of lot of um, pushback and controversy with these two artists were back in the day. They they kind of said they ain't had no issues, but you know everybody kind of felt they had some issues. We come back with their their branding and their Monica gent. Yeah, Monica. You know what I'm saying? They, they, had them, uh, they said Monica was on Monica shoes. Right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah with the white, I think she had the white shoes and something like that. Yeah, the white so, jellies on. Yeah, them. you know what I'm saying? So they in the room together, you know, and they always we everybody kind of always felt like they had some yeah. issues with each yeah. other, but they always kind of said they ain't had no issues, but. We, you know, what's was was understood. I don't have to be right. explained yeah. when it come down to that situation. So, you know, that was one of those ones. They sat in the room together. They played their music, and Brandon had some of those classy hits that we wanted. Yeah. And Monica, of course, they, had some they, of those they, classic they hits. Was out there beefing like Jeezy and Gucci. They in the room together, and they they kind of trying to, you know, what I'm saying I think they're trying to play it off and try to play it yeah. up for the cameras and make everything seem, seem like a Gucci. But we kind of felt, you know, we can kind of see that something wasn't right. Man, we can yeah. see it. We can, yeah. when it, it it comes on camera, we can see it. Man, it we was, can see it. it. it was, yeah, yeah. So. That was one of those ones, and then the last one is that one twelve versus jagged is. You know, what I'm saying come back with that R and B man. Yeah, that, that, yeah. That's that music that I grew up on, man. You know man. what I mean? That one twelve jagged is. It was just that that music, that classic music for classic them. Classic music, man. Mid twenties. Early 20s, you up in there doing your thing, pictures of crazy. So that wrap up my top five. We're gonna come back with the next top five. Wise, let me see what you got, boss. Man, so you know, uh, you know, my, one of my top fives on there was Jeezy and Gucci. We already went through that, so so we ain't gonna. Uh, we ain't, but mine's just 
one of mine was Timberland Swiss Beats, man. I love production. Yep. So, you know, when they was talking about, oh, I'm, we, about to, we about to go go back and forth, I was like, man, I was ready for that. Man. You know, Timberland had his own sound, you know, uh, with, with, with Jay-Z, Magoo and them back in the day. And then you had Swiss Beats with, with the Rough Riders and all that. So, man, that was, that was, man, I love that one. That one was dope. Um, so that was one of mine. Man, uh, Snoop and X. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that one. Oh, man, how did I forget that one? Man, Snoop and X. How did I forget like, that one? It, it, man, it, was just, it was just cool to see, to see Snoop up in there doing his classes, man, you know, burning it down. Why he doing his classes? Then you had DMX getting up in there. You know, DMX is, you know, he been through his trials and tribulations and all that. But he, hey, man, he had classics. Still yep. class to this day. So yep. when he was doing his thing up there, man, I was like, okay, yeah, that, that, that one was cold, man. So, that was uh, that was one of one of my favorites, man. And I, you know, so I did watch the Brandy and, and Monica one. I wasn't really too. Yeah, yeah, you weren't locked in like that. I was, I was locked in. I wasn't locked in like that. It's like you know, I had my old lady. She like she. We were locked in. We were locked in. Yeah, yeah. See, I, I mean, but we was locked in on the Erica, uh, Erica Badu and the, and and the Jill Scott. Scott. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they, it was just all type of vibes with that. Oh man. It was, it was, man. You know, Crazy vibe. Turn the lights down. And sit back and be like, man, let them do their thing. Let's go. Let's get it. Yeah, probably yeah, come this real quick and, let me, and, and see what and see what they about to do, man. I thought I thought I thought Jill Scott was gonna get up and do a little her little her little performance. Oh yeah, day, she didn't do it for the for the for the uh for the fans. You know, I was kind of I was kind of down. Ah, uh, you know, man, that was that was uh, all I had was three, man. That was yep. my that was my three. That Ooh. was my three. That's what that's what's up, man. We we wrapped up that you know that segment where we came back with the top five versus battle. Of course, we probably watched some of the same ones, so yeah. you know that was our top five. You know, I know you guys got some more of the top fives, and we got another one that's going to be popping off with the E forty. But we're going to talk about mm-hmm. that one later. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm saying this next one we want to this next one we want to roll into. We want to roll straight into the top five shows of the year. You know, what I'm saying these are some of these shows that we probably been watching because we've been locked in at the crib, been watching a lot of a lot of TV and yeah. absorbing a lot of more content. You know, so I let you kick off the first one. Man, so I'm going to start at number five, man. We go to number five. So number five for me is Power, man. 50 Cent, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, Power. That was dope. We all, you know, we all yep. like Power. Yep. That man came in as Kane. He had Ghost, man. Ghost was, you know, Ghost was Ghost, man. Tripping all on Angie. All that stuff. So number five. Then he had the spinoff. The spinoff. With the Power Book 2. Yeah, with the young boy. With the young boy, Tariq. Yep. Tariq. You know, Tariq was one of <laughs> he got his, hey, that's how he rolling. He got his own show, you know what I mean? He moved. Man, he got all the, he got, he got, the, he got the teachers on him. He got baby yeah. girl on him. He got, yeah. man, I'm like, this man, Tariq got a whole, you know what I mean? <laughs> on, man. Tariq ain't want to knock none of them. Yeah, Tariq. Come on, bro. Like, but, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's my number five. Number four was the shot. Yeah. Uh, the shot. Oh, yeah, shot go hard. Oh, shot go hard. Man, this last season, man, I was like, man, the, Stuff they were talking about when baby girl got kidnapped and all yeah. that. Yeah, I was like, damn, man, they got, got baby girl kidnapped like that. Yeah, I just thought the shot was. I think this season here was just a little bit on a on a down down for me. You know, what I'm saying I think they, I like I like what they talked about with the concept of her getting kidnapped. But I think they just like took the show in a different direction. I know that I talked about it on my podcast or my series with the shot. You know, so I just thought that they took the took a downward spiral, just kind of leading us in a role where it wasn't even fun. It wasn't funny. Like they were having their funny right. moments in the show. They didn't really have yeah. many funny moments in the more show. Serious, yeah. It was more serious. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying I understand that because they lost two of their top actors. You know, what I'm saying yeah. for whatever foolishness that went down right. between them. Right. But the, this wasn't my best season with the shot that I like. You know, even though I like the show overall because it is a right. black show. Right, right, yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. They did two of their top, uh, two of their top actors, man. And that was, uh, man. That was that was cold. That was cold. Then they they killed young uh killed the old dude. Ronnie, yeah, yeah, Ronnie, Ronnie yeah. Killed Ronnie, yeah, Ronnie, yeah. Ronnie, you know, Ronnie, you know, he always had a weird voice to me. Yeah, yeah, he did. He, he did. Gave my grandma. And then sometimes he and sometimes he come on the show. He he, he bring the show down a little bit. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. the. But you know, he still you know yeah. still kind of was rooting for people. Yeah, yeah, for Ronnie, man. They you like, know? nah, bro, you ain't gonna get this body. Ain't gonna think you gonna get nothing. Ain't nothing gonna happen to you, bro. Man. Back my uh number three is P Valley, man. P Valley, man, is is uh. <laughs> It was, it was, it was, it's a, it had some good scenes, but it had some crazy scenes too. Yeah, it like, did. Dude, the owner, man, like, I'm like, come on, man, we could have, we could have, yep. we could have went past those, man. We had to see that, but, you know, that P Valley was my number three, man. Had, had the dope, uh, the dope scenes, man. Uh, girls doing their thing. Great music. Yeah, great music, man. Great music. Uh, Mississippi, uh, what is his name? Chuggalista? Chuggalista, yeah. Chuggalista, whatever it was. But I was like, they came The sip, they talk about it for the sip, baby. Yeah, yeah. That was like, yeah, that's a crazy, that's a crazy name. So that's my number three. My number two is for life. 
I don't know if you watched that one. Oh, that's on ABC. It's the Fifty Gen. I, yeah, I, I haven't watched that one. Yeah, yeah, man. It's uh, basically it's about a uh, it's a true story about a dude that got falsely accused. You know, taken to jail. He was, I think he spent seven years in jail, something like that. Um, he uh, became a lawyer in jail yep. on his own. Fought his case, got out, became a lawyer. So, man, that was that's a real good one, man. That's a real good one. Uh, Fifty Cent, like you said, Fifty yep. Cent exactly produced that one. My number one, man. What I'm waiting on, man. R.I.P. My man John Singleton. Oh, Snowfall. Snowfall. Oh yeah, yeah I got Snowfall that. Snowfall yeah. is my sure. number one, man. Sure. Uh, my man uh, Franklin. Oh man. yeah, we read it. We read it, man. Hey, he that guy, man. He that yep. guy. Franklin and his cousin Leon. Yeah. Kind of hothead, but yep. you need. You, you got the shooter. You got the shooter. You got one to shoot and one for the one. One. Yeah. He the muscle. He the muscle, man. So, hey, hey, Snowfall. Hey, that's my that's my number one. Man. For sure. What you got, man? Hey, I'm doing. Here go mine. You know, I know we talked about it. P Valley was one of my shows that I watched for the sh- watch for uh, for show. You know, I, I love the intro. I love the music. You know, they talk about that down south. You know, man, that's good. That's some great, great, great opportunity for them to talk about the down south. Get ready, straight from the sip. Uh, my number two, Lovecraft Country. I know you guys weren't really watching those ones on HBO. Crazy. You know, it was like sci-fi horror. I'm really into that type of stuff. It was a crazy show. You know, that's the one by uh, uh, Jordan Peele, right? Jordan Peele, pre- yeah. uh, executive produced by Jordan Peele. You know, what I'm saying he he does a great job when it comes to that sci-fi horror type stuff. So yeah. if you had an opportunity, you know, I did do a podcast on that. If you haven't had a chance to listen to that, go back and you know, listen to some of my previous podcasts. I kind of do a whole series about that, or whereas the shot that you talked about. Okay. Uh, my next one is Insecure. You know, what I'm saying mm-hmm. by Issa Rae. Issa Rae was really dope. I, it's only thirty minutes, so I wish the show was a lot longer. Oh, yeah. You know, what I'm saying I give her eight episodes. Yeah, she do. Yeah, she. I, I, I only mess with <laughs> it. Hey, hey, it, hey, though, it's, a, it's a really dope show, and you know what I'm saying. And they kind of go through some highs and some lows on the show, but I think there's a show really. I think they need to have more episodes. Eight episodes just not enough. Yeah. And then um, the one that we always locked in on, the Last Dance with MJ. That was definitely oh, one, one of the more for me this year. Watching, goat, M, watching, goat. M, watching the goat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Watching the goat. It, we all, it was a perfect. Yeah. The goat. The goat. <laughs> the goat. Yeah. You know, everybody was locked in. We had opportunity to watch it. They push it out at the right time because everybody was at home. Yeah. We watched it together. We bought well, two episodes a night for like four weeks or something locked like in. that. We locked in Sunday, on Sunday. Up. We walked because nothing else to watch. And they yeah. put it. It was supposed to come out at a different time, but they made it come out during the time we was in the pandemic. So everybody saw it. So all eyeballs was on this. Yeah. It was a great opportunity for a lot of content, a lot of feedback. So you know, we talked about the goat, MJ. Man, the go. And then you know, so, um, we talk. You know, one of the ones I have is Snowfall. Of course, I'm rocking with Snowfall. I love all them, them, them dope type movies. You know, it's loosely based on Freeway Rick and Ross life. I think, yeah, uh, loosely based on his life. You know, with Franklin. So he actually from UK. The guy who plays it. You know, saying UK UK actor. Flip his, uh, flip his accent on and off. You know, saying learn from Dub C. I think he got the accent. You think he learned American really? accent from Dub C. I think kind of work on Dub C from West Coast. Yeah. So I think don't don't quote me on, but I think that's right. And then I had a bonus one. Cobra Kai is on Netflix. If you haven't watched Cobra Kai, you know, it's like one of those shows that if you really watch Karate Kid and you was into the Karate Kid back as a kid, you know what I'm saying? This is kind of flip on it where they kind of do a lot of the, the talk about the show in the old uh, old manner, but they kind of do a nice little twist on it. Whereas they kind of got, you know what I'm saying, Netflix kind of got it and, and kind of put a flip on it. And I really like I really like that show. And I think if you haven't had a chance... They bring the crank kick back? They got it, bro. They got everything. And they do a lot of reference where they have, you know what I'm saying, where they got a lot of reference where you got the, the young guy who got kicked in the face, you know what I'm saying? Now he's coming back trying to re, re uh, reinvent the uh, the Cobra Kai whole right. situation, and yeah. they kind of have you know Dan LaRusso, you know they kind of it's, it's all it's, it's a lot of the actors who was in the movie the first time they're in the in the TV series, so that's Check one of those ones. All right, so that's our top five uh, TV shows that that's we right. kind of talked about that you guys get the opportunity to watch. Next, we're gonna flip over. We're gonna talk about some of our other you know some of the things that we want to see. Top top three verses. We're gonna make this quick for you. Gonna do the top mm-hmm. three verses that we want to see. I'll go first. My first, I want to see Dipset versus G-Unit. You know what I'm saying? This one of the ones I think, we, you know what I'm saying, I want to see. This going to be one of those battles I think that will be epic for the New York scene. You know, those guys will really kind of like, I don't know who will really play a lot of music from the, from the G-Unit side besides 50 joints. Right. But I know Dipset got that diplomatic music yeah, yeah. and they got those records for you. So that's one of those ones. Me, another, I'm representing for the South again. 8-Ball MJG versus UGK. I think that's going to be one of those battles that we will really get into that I would really love and, and really um, look look forward to seeing in the future. And then there's one I think that everybody would love to see. Cash Money versus No Limit. I think that would be one of those battles, you know what I'm saying? Man, that N-O, that N-O. There was, was a lot of music came out in those times man, for those different, for no, from that, that whole be, camp. That would be tough right there. Yeah, that's that Cash tough. Money, No Limit. So I think that was, one of, that was my top three. Um... Uh, versus that, that I like to see. I gotta give it to. Uh, I will give it to uh, no, uh, not no no cash money. Yeah, it's gonna, it'll be hard, man, because cause P got them joint. They get old dope. We got a lot of music come out of there. You know, Fiend, a lot of them guys. They got a lot of music came out of there. It do, but yeah. I, just, I just don't think you know he don't have the 
Sit the shocker. And that's what I brought. Mystical. Yeah, got mystical. mystical. He got those guys like Juvie and yeah, BG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big Timers, all yeah, that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so. What you got? Man, mine is 3 6 versus Dipset. Woo! That would be a good one. 3 6. I had 3 6 and Bone. They canceled it, so I didn't know if I should really bring that one yeah. back, though. But yeah. I don't think Bone, like I said, Bone, I, was, I mean, Bone has some happy hits. They have yeah. hits, but. I think three six man, they still they they man, they have a lot. So three six, I think three six and Dipset would be uh would be the one. Um, I did want to see Ti versus Fifty just because Ti was running his mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I don't think. I think Ti th- got more of them hood trap songs, but yeah. I think you know Fifty got the bigger the bigger the bigger uh, songs. Yeah, yeah, got yeah. the bigger songs. So yeah, it's yeah. like, man, you know you don't really you don't really want to uh you know that wouldn't really go nowhere. Yeah. But I did want to see, I did want to see, I do want to see Dr. Dre. I want to see Dre versus Manny Fresh. Ooh. I don't know. Dre, Dre sounds, Dre sounds just a little bit out of, I think he, I think his, I think his sounds a little bit out of the reach for Manny. Like when we did with Scott Stewart. So I think it sounds a little bit, you know, a little bit more I'm like, regional. Who else, who else? I mean, who else, who, who else can you see? I mean, he can saw Timbo. Mm-hmm. Timbaland Tim, or, Tim, or, or uh, Neptune, uh, some uh, you know what I'm saying? Maybe, yeah, man, maybe, maybe, maybe. Neptune's got, got, got some, maybe yeah. Neptune, maybe. So, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a producer guy, man. So, I want to see Dre go, go at somebody else, man. So, so, that's my top three, top three, uh, versus I wanted to see. Cool. All right, this is your boy Frank Nita. We back with another segment. You know, we just wrapped up with our top five shows that we like to see. I know you guys like to talk about the shows that you want to see. We've been all locked in together, been watching different shows, but yes, we're gonna come back to you with our with our next one. We're gonna talk about the album of the year. You know, what I'm saying this is gonna be the album. That I think that you know I, I had a great you know affinity to as far as a replay value, mm-hmm. and I kick it off with this one. I'm gonna kick it off with the little baby. My turn. Come back to that. You know, saying the A Town sound. Little baby had a magical year. You know, he's kind of been putting out a lot of different work with that album, and hit him, and then come with the real with the deluxe the yeah. deluxe album. You know, saying putting a couple of more records on there. So you know, that's my you know album of the year. Mine's uh, Alfredo. Freddie Gibbs album of the year. Man, it had dope production. You know, Freddie Gibbs gonna give you the bars every time. Man, he's gonna give you the uh, uh, the witty bars. He's gonna give you the, the grimy bars. Like I said, the alchemist man. He's gonna he always give you some crisp, dope uh, production behind there, man. That like I said, that duo that duo was nice, man. So Alfredo, I think he was nominated for rap album of the year. Um, I'm, I believe Little Baby might be in that. Maybe might be, might be in that too. But man, Alfredo, that's my uh, album of the year. Cool, cool. So, you know, with this, we wrap up that one, our artist of the year. We're going to hit you with another one, um, another little topic that we, I'm kind of sneaking in on. Them. We're going to do some overrated, underrated. I'm hit with some one-hitter mm-hmm. quarters. We're going to talk about some quick stuff. We're going to do some overrated, underrated. Okay. Ready? Let's go. All right, we'll do Let's get it. Overrated, underrated, 2020 NBA championship. Come on, man. Come on, man. I'm, I'm like, why you going to start with that Well, You know what I think it is, man. <laughs> hey, man, that's the overrated. Overrated. Man. We, they was in, first of all, they was in the bubble. I mean... They didn't. They stopped this. They stopped. They had to stop the season middle of the uh, middle of the season because their boy Rudy Gobert, Utah Jazz, is trash. Uh, so they had to uh, stop the season because of that. And then they go into the bubble with this. What is it? The one game. Uh, the one game playoff. Uh, but they had to play in though. They had. They, yeah, had, they had like a two. They had a two week tune up, and then you had yep. to play. You had an opportunity to play in. They had to play in. But man, it was it was it was overrated, man. Like, come on, man. You had you had everybody knew. The Lakers is going to win. That. Nah, nah, nah. Because everybody was talking about how to how to how to how to uh, how to Portland Trailblazers was going to take care of them because Dane was hot when he came back into the when he came back into the uh, the playoff. Well, not the playoff, but the play in opportunity. The, the Trailblazers were hot. They were talking about how the Trailblazers. They were hoping. They were, everybody was hoping that the Trailblazers kind of get that eight spot so they can play the Lakers. Matter, yeah. matter of fact, I think it was underrated because um, I just technically I think it was underrated because I feel like you know the bubble. Yes, they had to stop. But everybody stopped. They gave Kawhi opportunity to get rest. A lot of players opportunity. They got four or five months off to get opportunity to get rest. But then you had to go down to the bubble where everybody had the same thing to eat. They had to stay the same place. You had no travel. You had no girls. You had nothing. It was like you had everything was on the platter for everybody to be an even playing field. You had no home court advantage. None of that. 
You know what yeah. I'm saying? So you had opportunity. You had some nagging injuries that came after All Star break or whatever, and you got an opportunity to rest up. You had an opportunity to kind of heal your body, and you come back into the playoff. I mean, you come back into the, a tune up oh, two man. weeks. You, you come back and you got tune up two weeks. Everybody had the same amount they of time. Helped, they helped the Lakers, right? They helped, it helped the Lakers. It helped, it helped everybody. It helped, yeah. it helped, it not only helped the Lakers, yeah, because they're older team. You know, Bron, yeah, AD. But you have to think about you had Kawhi, Paul George. You had Dame that was already kind of. You had, you had Dame. Then you Let's had, keep it real about with, Kawhi, man. Kawhi ain't that dude. I ain't never said he was that dude. Yeah. I'm just saying, but. He had, you know, he was already low managing through the season, so he had opportunity to get a chance to kind of rest up. Then you had Dame, and then you had um, uh, CJ. He had nagging injuries, and they had playoff yeah. players that were hurt. True. Then you had opportunity for the East to kind of get healthy. So everybody had the same amount of leverage to come into the playoff and no, play B. Even playing field. So I think it was. A, yeah. I think that's the most even playing field that you can possibly have when it comes to a sport at a time because everybody was at the same bubble. Everybody started the same level, and they played it all the way out. So you know, right. even though I'm not the biggest Braun fan, everybody know I'm not the biggest Braun fan, but I. I just think the the bubble as a whole. I think everybody had an even opportunity you know, to kind of get in there. Right, it was even. Yeah, it was even playing field to get in there. But I don't think I think it was overrated because it helped. It helped. Man, it helped the older teams as the Lakers. The older, but it gave it gave the younger teams the opportunity, the chance to to kind of you know get ready and kind of boost their morale and get ready for it, get ready for the playoffs too. Because you got you know it's in the trail players, they're, they're a little bit younger team, and you had right. the Mavs, they're a younger team. You so boys play team, hard. They need they, they need their crowd base. They need their crowd yes. base. Yes, that younger team to 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 get them going. But, but then the when you're on the, guys, but, but, but when you're on the road as a young team, you, it's hard for you. You know what I'm saying? When you're a young team, young player like the Mavs, you're on the road. You know, niggas on the road. You think yeah. about game seven. You got game seven in L.A. versus game seven in, you know what I'm saying, Denver. You know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, I had to think about that, too. So, I think it just, okay. I think that's why I think it was just more of an even game playing Game seven in L.A., man. You know LeBron be choking, man. He wouldn't, <laughs> he wouldn't have been to pull that out, man. All right. So, we're going to hit the next one. The 2020 pandemic, overrated, underrated. Oh, man. Uh I think it's underrated, man. Underrated. I think it's underrated, underrated man. Because uh, people still out here acting like ain't no ain't no big thing going on. They're on the real. These cats dropping like flies. They're, they're on the real, man. Midwest right now. Yeah. These cats dropping like flies. So I yeah. think it's underrated, overrated on how they're going about going to Costco and, and yeah. killing all. All right, man. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah, it's crazy. Like yeah. saw and all that. Like, come it's on. It's crazy. Should have been washing your hands. We fight, we fighting about tissue. About tissue, man. <laughs> about tissue. Come on, we fight about tissue. We fight about tissue. Sanitizer. Man, should, hey, hey, man, the best is, is, is water and soap, man. You should have been washing it. Yeah, man. So I, I think it's underrated, too, but you know what I'm saying? But it gave me an opportunity to kick out my podcast, you know, some of the things that everybody kind of settled down, gave me an opportunity to do things I've been wanting to do. So I think it's kind of underrated because people wasn't taking it serious. Like you said, we still yeah. got people in Texas, Atlanta, and different places in Florida. They weren't really taking it serious. Houston, they haven't been taking it serious. Houston, man. They haven't been taking it serious. So, you know, now we kind of get to the point where we have, we're, on a, we're on another shutdown, kind of here out here in the Bay. We're on another yeah. shutdown. So this is where we are right now. Next one, come at you. Uh, Trump kissing the Ronald. Overrated, underrated. Man, that's overrated, man. <laughs> overrated, man. Come on, man. That dude went to the, went to the he called Rhoda, went to the hospital, came out what? Three days later. Come on, man. Three days later. Hey, man, what are you about? You about 78. <laughs> Come on, man. That's Three days later. Man, he went up in there. Yeah, man. It's overrated. I don't believe none of that. None, none of that. None of that. None yeah. of that. Yeah. And then they're not they're talking about take, they're going to take the, the vaccination live on, t- live on TV so everybody can see. We don't believe that, you Come know what I'm saying? We don't, we don't believe that, you know what I'm saying? We know the, we know the vaccine is kind of kind of starting to hit the markets, and, uh, and I want people to be safe before they actually, you know, take it, you know what I mean? We don't know what side effects are going to be, but we definitely want, you know, people to get healthy. So whatever shot that we have, you know, we got an opportunity to take it, you know, we got to do what you got to do. Take Especially it. people in the healthcare field, you got to do what you got to do. Right. You know, just yeah, be safe. Live on TV, man. What is it? WWF, man? Yeah. Come on, he, he just catch tripping, man. <laughs> All right. Overrated, underrated. Homeschooling. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, 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 Like, in what way? Like, is it a good thing or a bad thing? Is it, is it overrated or is it underrated? Man, I think that damn thing is, 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 is overrated, <laughs> Man, they, hey, because you, you got a full-time job and you got to be a full-time teacher? Yep. Come on, man. Then you got the company to expect you to get your full... Work from Low. home, man. Yeah, man. Nah. Now, work from home, man. It's, it's overrated, bro. Like, at first, you think you come kick the crib, you ain't got to deal with the traffic. But when you stuck in the crib with kids, you got to do three meals a day, homework, activities, your work, keep them entertained. You know what I'm saying? So, I just man. think it's overrated, man. I just think it's just talking overrated. about the teaching. you talking about homework, man. It's, everything is at home. Yeah, man. It's overrated, man. And then, hit you up one last time. Wearing a mask while the pandemic going on. Overrated, underrated. Underrated. <laughs> these, hey, these cats be out here like, like, how many people, man? They be walking around here like ain't no big thing, man. Yeah, man. You know, they be coming to try to talk to you close, man. You, you know, you keep back. Yeah, man. Underrated, man. These, 
Put a, put a damn mask up. <laughs> All right, man. That's our overrated, underrated uh, a segment. Well, our next segment, we appreciate you guys hanging in there with us. We're going to kind of kick it with our next segment. Our next segment, we're going to roll straight into it. We're going to do the top memes of this 2020 year. I'm going to kick it out fresh off, fresh off for you okay, guys. The ahead, top one for the year has yeah. to be Nate Robinson getting knocked out by Jake Paul. Man. You know, he said he said he said the NBA players back, man. He said him back. back. You know, he let a YouTube star knock him out. I know what I'm saying. He took it on the chin. He came out there, you know, Snoop was doing the commentating. Snoop was just kinda took it to another level and leveled yeah. it up. But when we see him getting knocked out, man, we was just like, what in the world just happened? Man, you know what I'm saying? Cool. He talked all that trash to that man. That man been boxing, he been he been practicing, and then Nate just went in there with his head down and get hit eight times and he out out for the count. Man, I knew it was gonna happen. That man said he'd been practicing, I mean he'd been boxing for two years. It ain't a long time, but it's more than a dude that's been boxing for two weeks. You know what I mean? <laughs> that man Nate Robinson came on told well, you know, cause he you know he got a little swollen all over. Hey man, they ain't got nothing to do with that. This ain't wrestling, man. Knocked him out, man. Knocked him out. Smooth out, man. Man, my next, next, back. My next one gonna be the real Smith face when Jada told me she was caught up in an entanglement. I think that had to be the one, man. You know what I'm saying? Him getting this, getting that look. He had that, just that sad look on his face. And that just ran around. It ran through the internet, man. He get, he get caught up in an entanglement. I think that was the one. You know what I'm saying? Man, I'm like, bro, did you not? I thought everybody knew that was going on. That boy was sitting <laughs> up at that red table. Like, I'm like, bro, I ain't even. You see that man with your... With your kids and your wife, come I'm just on, saying, man. Yeah, I think that that was the one, man. That was the one, bro. He he had that sad face on, man. That, that ran through the neighbor. That ran through. It's just like the MJ. You know, what I'm saying it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not on top of the MJ one, but it's up there, man. You hey. got the MJ Tiger Woods. And you got the Will Smith Jack. Hey, Jada Smith called. Jada Smith sat across the table, and said, "I like." She came up with a new word for cheating. She said entanglement. I'm in entanglement. I'm in entanglement. I said entanglement. I'm in entanglement. Entanglement. Why would we use that at work? Why you didn't get this done? Man, I was in entanglement. I'm in entanglement. I'm in entanglement with these kids or something, man. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't get it done. Hey, she she called one for that. She said entanglement. Yeah, man, got them locked up. What you got for me, man? So I was with you on that. So I had I had uh I had uh Nate Robinson getting get knocked knocked the fuck out. Um, then I had uh I had uh I had your boy Will Smith on there too, but then. I don't know if this is me, but I had I had my man uh, uh, Sway the remix guy when he came out with "Baby, You About to Lose Your Job." Oh when, man, bro, that, man, that shit had me crying. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. How he remixed that? So, yeah, that was that was that was my. Uh, that's what I had, man. That's what I had for the for the me uh, top three of the year, man. That's what's up, man. You know. Man. We appreciate you guys. You, you know, see, you see, you see. I know you see the neon, uh, neon uh, boat came through. You feel me? That's how we. That's how dope. That's how we doing, man. That's we we've doing. been up from the sun up to the sun down, man. That's how we rocking, man. We've been out here for a minute. You know what I'm saying? We're doing something different. We put an experience on for you guys, man. We kind of come up with these topics so you guys can kind of wrap up this 2020. Yes, you know, we're gonna. Uh, we we've got one last one. I know you guys want to kind of hear about. You know, mm -hmm. it's gonna be going down. We got the battle with the E40 and yes, two short got to put on for the bay. You know, two legends in the bay. You know what I'm saying? You know, Who you got? Man, you know, man, I grew up on my man Show Dog, man. So hey, I got Show, I got Show, man. Uh, like, but E Forty, he that dude too. Yeah, mm -hmm. but if I had to pick, man, I'm going with Show Dog, man. He got the classic, man. Bitch. Uh, yeah, man. He, man, he made the word bitch a, 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 a staple. Man. Yeah, man, it's a staple in in, in rap, man. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I got man yeah. with the beats, man, the bass, the eight oh eight behind it, man, with the with the bass line, with the with the live bass guitar, man. I mean. Show dog, man. He, to me, man, he he a legend in the game. Man. He yeah. still got Cassie's day sampling his, his beats, man, putting out having hits behind him, man. But man, don't sleep on Forty though. Yep, Forty, man. That man, that man, religious. That man, language, man. He changed the way Cassie's oh, yeah. talking, man. Oh yeah, that lingo, that lingo, crazy, man, crazy so, lingo. He Forty, man. He a legend himself, man. I can't wait to see this, uh, see this verses, man. Uh, who you got? Me. My brother put me on Too Short coming up, man. That's what I'm rocking with, you know what I'm saying? I, I understand E-40 is a legend. You know, he kind of broke through for the South with Sprinkle Man and stuff like that. Yeah. But just growing up in the South and my brother listening to that Too Short, man, you know what I'm saying? I was too young to be listening to it at the time. Yeah. But when I was listening to it, I didn't, I didn't quite understand what he was saying. But as I got older, yeah. I definitely understand it now. But when he was rapping back then, it was just like them sounds, and them bass sounds. You know, you, yeah. I didn't really understand all that music, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I was much younger. But when he was just playing that sound, you, when you heard it, it was just infectious. It kind of oh, got yeah. into you, man. You know, yeah. Like I said, and just living out here in the bay, you kind of feel that culture and feeling that feeling that energy. Yeah, so man. for me personally, I got two. I got I got Shout Dog on that. You know, I think he's been putting out some classic music. You know, you yeah. know that, that uh um 
uh, what is it? Uh, damn, I can't think of the record where not, not bitch, but he got a, he got another one that's that's a classic where um, my wife loves. So I can't think of the name of it right now. You know, I'm, I'm the worst when it comes to naming songs and stuff like that. But you know, short dog for me, I think he's the one. You know. Man, you guys have been rocking with us for the, like I said, from sun up to sundown, man. Yes, We've been doing our thing out here. You know, I put on this whole set. I got my guy Wallace to come through sir, from the Beta Rock with me, man. Me. Appreciate yes. you guys coming in. You know what I'm saying? I put in all the artwork, man. It's been put. I had this idea. I put this together in like two weeks. You know, I worked hard night in and night out. You know, yeah. after I did everything with my kids, they go to sleep. I go out of my little tiny garage. You know, so I want to make it work. Put a set together for you guys. I got the bike, the different pieces of artwork, and then I put this together for you guys, man. We're just trying to put something visual so that you guys can understand that you know it's still an opportunity for us to get out here and be creative even though we're in the middle of the pandemic you know so i want to appreciate my guy wallace for coming through man dope vision experience we're going to be doing bigger and better things i'm going to get my boy wallace come back through with me again we're going to we're going to pick another scenery we're going to do something beautiful like i said this bay area i know you guys have been seeing people coming through in the boats you know saying man ride on the kayaks and different things this is something beautiful man we're going to continue to go up continue to do beautiful things and continue to kind of you know grow the podcast i want you guys to continue to listening we're going to do that snowfall we might get my guy wallace come through in a couple episodes uh recap on that snowfall because i'm gonna do the mini series when it come up when it when it actually start back up i think yes, it's february 24th when it starts so i do a mini series within the podcast series so you know you guys continue to rock with me like yeah. i said man y'all go ahead and tag rose and tell us to send us a hundred bottles man, man we need a hundred cases rose, we, we need a hundred we need a hundred cases man that's how we're gonna go up for you you want to go out while well, talk to him talk to him tell him we're gonna sign off on us hey man i just want to i appreciate you having me here man had a great time man like i said sun up to sundown man uh we, we recap 2020 man 2021 gonna be a better year not a, hopefully it is gonna be a better year man and uh like i said man rose send us a hundred bottles next year man i know you good man we good for it man send we out here in the bay bottles. man we holding it down man this is a dope vision experience remember as always it's collaboration over competition this your boy with my boy wallace yes sir we out yeah man let's do it yes sir hey that shit was dope man already all right